Right, so I've uh, torn off another DuPont. This is just two wires. Uh, so I want to connect the uh, MOSFET, which now has my uh, special connector on this one here, to the output of the decoy. Now, um, I've got here gate connected to the midpoint between the two transistors and source connected to zero volts. But it did occur to me while I was uh, in bed the other day, that's when I have my best thoughts, that if I moved the gate up to nine volts and the source up to this midpoint, I could actually get an inversion. Because let's say that uh, this top transistor is on, putting nine volts into gate, and uh, the source is connected to naught volts anyway, that would be, um, well, the, the decoy has an inherent inversion anyway, but let's go the other way. Let's tie gate to nine volts and source to this midpoint. Well, if the top transistor is on, source will be connected through to gate. So the uh, FET will be off. And if the bottom transistor is on, if gate is up here, source will then be pulled down to naught volts with gate tied to nine volts. So the bottom transistor will turn the MOSFET on. So depending on how I connect these wires, to these four pins on the output of the decoy, I can either have inverting or non-inverting. Brilliant, it's more flexible than I thought it was. Right, so my MOSFET uh, is connected to the output of the decoy and I've connected it like this, gate to the midpoint, source to zero volts. Now, of course, it's not gonna affect the input side at all because we have complete uh, optical isolation between input and output, whether or not this MOSFET is actually being driven to nine volts and driven to naught volts at this frequency. We're only going to determine by getting the oscilloscope out. So let's do that now. Right, so I've got the scope um, literally connected across the MOSFET because I'm interested in the uh, voltage on the gate relative to source. So that's con just connected directly across there. The MOSFET's not doing anything, but uh, we're just interested in what's happening on the gate side of the MOSFET. So let's take a look at the waveform. And uh, there it is. So that's um, about 50%. So it's quite distorted at this frequency. Let's just turn the measure on, make sure we've got that. Yeah, we have got uh, 31 point something kilohertz. So if I bring it, now if I turn this clockwise, um, that's actually going lower because the decoy has this inherent inversion. But I'm gonna try swapping those connections around and seeing whether I can get that uh, another inversion so that it uh, goes back to being positive. Just looking at the signal across gate and source on the MOSFET. Um, so yes, it is struggling at this frequency to drive it uh, high and low. It's quite a distorted waveform, but uh, yeah, I can drive it all the way up to 100%. It doesn't trigger there, of course, and drive it all the way down to 0%. And again, I lose trigger. And um, that's about 50% with the slot of the pot uh, going across like that. So certainly it's working, but can I improve that signal? Now the first thing I want to know is can I get an inversion? So what I want to see is as I increase this, it goes more towards the high side and decrease it goes to the low side. Currently it's doing the opposite of that. So let's uh, move these connections. So what I wanted to do was move, well really it's just putting them up there, isn't it? And yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted, as I turn this clockwise, this goes more on. As I turn it anti-clockwise, counterclockwise, this goes more off. So simply by moving the two wires to the top two pins, I get an invert relative to having those two wires on the bottom two pins. Instant inversion. So the problem I had the other day with the um, inverted output uh, on I think it was pin three, is now a complete irrelevance. Thanks, by the way, to everyone who suggested remedies uh, using software, but I don't need to use software. It's simple. I just move wires. How more simple could it get? But that's working fine. Now I've got one more trick up my sleeve. Can I improve the shape of this waveform? And this one I've not tried, and I've no idea if it's going to work. So what I thought is um, that this 9 volt source, this 9 volt battery, actually has a fairly high internal resistance. So when we're charging the MOSFET gate, we're charging from the battery 9 volts through a sort of uh, equivalent or internal resistance of the battery through the transistor and into the gate. So it's going to charge a little bit more slowly 
then it's going to discharge. When it discharges, uh, the gate and the source are connected together just through this transistor. So you've got the resistance of these wires. Yes, you've got that. But you don't have the internal resistance of the battery. So I thought, what about putting a capacitor between 9 volts and 0 volts? Would that slightly improve that um, the shape of that signal? Now, what I want is a capacitor with a very low ESR, equivalent series resistance. And as far as I remember, tantalum capacitors have a low ESR. So I'm going to plug a tantalum capacitor into the outer two holes of this uh, little turn pin socket I put on there and just see if that improves that wave shape. As I say, I don't know if this is going to work. Now I've got to get this capacitor uh, the right way around because I'm effectively connecting it directly across uh, that 9 volt battery. So positive is there. So it's that way around. I won't be looking at the markings on there. Right, so let's plug that in and just see what happens to that waveform. As I say, I've no, no idea if this is going to work or not. But in you go. Oh. Well, that's in there, and it doesn't seem to have affected that at all. So that didn't really work, did it? The internal resistance of this battery uh, can't be as bad as I thought it might be. Now, of course, there is one way to uh, get a much improved uh, MOSFET gate signal. That's actually looking pretty square now. And that's to slow the whole thing down. So I've slowed it down from uh, 31 kilohertz. I'm not sure if you can see that. But that's now running at uh, 3.9 kilohertz. That's using uh, a divisor of 8 on the prescaler rather than 1. So it's running 8 times slower. Um, yeah, there's not any real distortion to the... Well, there's a little bit. But there's very little distortion to the signals at that frequency. So possibly if I'm going to use this uh, decoy MOSFET driver, then I'm going to have to uh, pick a frequency of uh, pulse width modulation to drive the MOSFET that is kind of um, set low enough that the MOSFET switching is nice and clean, but high enough, of course, that I don't need a colossal great inductor in my uh, buck or boost circuit. Um, well, I'm reasonably happy because uh, certainly this option of inverting or non-inverting by moving these uh, two wires, that works. I'm happy with that. Uh, unfortunately, my little capacitor mod uh, didn't really help the shape of this waveform. Uh, one thing I might try actually is getting some different opto isolators because these are these ultra cheap uh, PC817 optos. It's possible I can get some faster optos so that we get a, uh, a slightly improved waveform at this 31 kilohertz. Um, but as I say, I've got another mod to the decoy which I think is going to be uh, quite beneficial. That's uh, that's coming uh, in a in a little while. But uh, anyway, for today, I'm happy with this. Cheerio.